my top 10 worst Amstrad games. I previously covered what I consider to be the finest games to ever grace the Amstrad. Let's now go to the other end of the scale and check out what the worst the Amstrad has to offer. Number 10. Home Runner. Gee, I wonder how they came up with the name for this game. Maybe it's got something to do with the fact that you must run from the bottom of the screen to the top area marked HOME. A basic title for what is a basic game. Along the way, you pick up provisions and avoid what the manual calls Astro Spiders. Each stage is divided up by platforms, which annoyingly change in size every few seconds. Home Runner is boring, repetitive and crudely programmed. Walking into a spider will cost you your life, but if they drop from a higher platform onto your head you escape unhurt. A key ingredient to a platformer are the jumping mechanics, and this is another area where the game fails. You don't so much jump, but rather hover up until you hit a platform which halts your ascent. You'd think something this bad would be first in the top 10, but as you will soon see, things can get much, much worse. Number 9. World Cup Carnival I love football, but wasn't interested in the video games based on the beautiful game until Sensible Soccer and the original FIFA hit the market. World Cup Carnival is a good example why in the early years of my gaming life I rarely gave footy games a chance. Believe it or not, this is the official game for the 1986 World Cup. It's hard to believe how something this horrible got a license. Shoot at either side of the keeper and you're guaranteed a goal, thanks to the terrible goalkeepers. They just stand in the middle of the goal as if they have accepted a bribe to throw the game. Sure, they dive, but all that does is change the look of the sprite, because they remain in the same spot. I'm not being harsh because this game is so simple. I mean, I've played a soccer game on the Atari, where you control three blocks, which are meant to be players, and I still managed to find that entertaining, unlike this pile of crap. If football fans are forced to play this game for fun during the 80s, it's no wonder many of them turned into hooligans. Number 8. Crazy Golf Anyone who plays all 18 holes of this game has probably lost their marbles. Perhaps that's why they named this Trash Crazy Golf. Most people will probably be hitting the off switch before they even complete the first course. Select the ball direction with right and left, how much power you want to put into your swing with up and down, and then strike the ball with fire. In case you're wondering, the ball is that small thin line. Come to think of it, everything you see on the screen is made up of lines. There are virtually no graphics to speak of. If I could be asked to brush up on my programming skills, I could probably make it this game. Would I want to? Hell no. I'd be embarrassed to make something this awful, and so should the people who released this tripe. Number 7. Thundercats. This is a double whammy. Not only is it a horrible game, but it manages to tarnish the fond memories I have for the cartoon series it's based on. For shame. The player controls Lionel, who is out to stop Mumra's latest plot. Walk to the end of the level, which is populated with beastmen and midgets. Yep, no crap game is complete without irritating halflings who are out to bite your kneecaps. Most of the time you get swamped by enemies from both sides, and die as you cannot possibly keep them all at bay with your feeble sword. One hit, and the mighty Lionel loses a life. How lame. Next! Number 6. Am Soccer. Just missing out on the top 5 is the second soccer game on the list. No fancy features in this one, folks. Just a one-off match between Amster Rovers and IJK United. If you're going to use invented team names, you'd think they would have made up something better than this. Well, it sets a precedent for what is to come in this 
for a side footy fiasco. One of the worst parts of the game is how the pitch is divided into three sections. Transferring from the penalty area to the halfway line involves slow scrolling, which breaks up the action. You're also only allowed to control one outfield player per section of the pitch, and if you try to run further upfield, you'll be blocked by an invisible wall. Ugh. The keepers cover most of the goal, which makes it hard to score, and the ball zooms about unrealistically. At times it feels like you're playing a game of Pong, with the slow, chubby players chasing the sphere in vain. Cheesy as it may sound, I give this game the red card.